Praise the Lord. Welcome to A Word with Bishop Roussel. My guest today is Bishop Fred Allen Jones, man of God, uh, world-renowned uh, recording artist, uh, founder of uh, Jones Family Singer. Uh, welcome to the show, Bishop. Thank you for having me. All right. Bless you, sir. Listen, um, quickly, Bishop, if you don't mind, uh, tell us a little thing, a few things about your church, your uh, email information, and where your church is. All right. Uh, the name of the church is the Mount Zion Pentecostal uh, Cathedral. We're located at 411 Broadway in the city of Markham, Texas. Uh, you can reach me uh, by email bishopjones58 at yahoo.com. Or you can, uh, as the young people say, hit us up on the uh, World Wide Web at www.thejonesfamilysingers.com. Um, we are there in Markham. We've been there for quite some time doing the work for the Lord. And uh, we believe in standing on God's Word and God's Word alone. And it is the premise by which we go throughout the land and country. Now, Bishop, now we know that you hadn't always been saved. So uh, what's going on uh, with you uh, in the area of where you were then? Where you are now, now you're a bishop, you're recording all this, and you're the man of God. But we know before that yeah. you hadn't always been saved. Just tell us a little bit about your conversion. All right. Uh, to be honest with you, I come from a long line of sinners. I come from a group of sinners that could do it in any language you want. And uh, I grew up in that environment where you cuss, you fuss, you fight. Uh, you take issue uh, that lasts sometimes years through anger, hatred. But one day I heard the word of God, and I heard a song said, come on out of that corner. You can't hide. Lights turned on, and you can't hide. And somehow it registered with my inner man, and I knew that something had to change. And uh, I was raising a family, and I knew I couldn't raise a family drunk half the time. I used to smoke three packs a day. It's 20 cigarettes in a pack, so I was sucking up 60 cancer sticks. And by the grace of God, I did not develop cancer nor die from emphysema or anything. But hearing the word of God literally changed my life. Praise and I knew I couldn't raise a family in that old condition and uh, uh, raise uh, uh, profitable people who would be blessing to their age group and surroundings. So I knew then I had to change. So you knew that you would uh, be a minister of the word or God called you? How, how did that happen? My daddy's mama, uh, we call her Big Mama, Miss Emma Jones, told me as a child, when I was a child, the kids wouldn't play with me. They alienated me and pushed me away. Mm. And I would cry, and she said, that's okay, baby. They don't want to play with you now, but they go on after a while. Wow. She said, God's hand is on you, and you're different from them. That's why they won't let you hang out with them, and you wouldn't know what to do if you did. Wow. So she told me, she said, you know no understanding now but you will by and by. And as I grew up under uh, uh, my uh, big mama, uh, watching her go to church, she drove me to church. The rest of them could do what they want, but I had to go. Mm. And I developed a desire and a like for church. Even though I didn't understand it, I liked what the saints were doing and the way they were carrying on. Mm -hmm. And she was a big uh, help in my life. She was my major help. Mm -hmm. So then uh, as I grew into this thing, it started to become more uh, my lifestyle. It becomes uh, second nature to me. And uh, it's just Your church, Mount Zion, what's going on with it? Uh, uh, you, you pioneered that church? Yes, okay. yes. I pioneered that church. Uh, I was in the Church of God in Christ uh -huh. for a great deal of my saved life. And then I, I, I felt the, the leading of the Lord to go and help my brother who was already in his ministry in Akron, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And it took me two years to say yes to him that I would help him. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I did, I, I was very instrumental in helping him. And I got a chance to travel in and out of the country mm -hmm. helping him. And then the Lord said, now I want you to take the time to work on what I've given you in Markham. Mm -hmm. And the minute I went back to work on it, we moved from a small building into a larger building. We moved from the back side of town 
to the main street in town. God just orchestrated all of it. Now, Bishop, when I met you in the early 90s, you was heavily involved in street ministry, tent ministry, prison yes. ministry. Are you still doing those I, type of things? I do that. In fact, uh, I do that as often as I can. But I was just telling the church, and it's, it's beautiful that you asked that question, because I was just telling the church last week, we're getting back to the street corners. We're getting back to the nursing home. We're getting back to the hospital. So the 38 gym. years of, uh, in ministry, so you've seen, it's safe to say that you've seen a lot of things happen in those years in the church. Now, this morning you said something uh, that it was a difference between church people and saints. Yes. Can you just explain that to us real quick? Yes. Uh, church people, uh, by and large, people who come to church, they do church things, but they're not committed or dedicated uh, to the scripture, mm -hmm. uh, that it transforms their life from the inside. Mm -hmm. Saints are those who are constantly praying, fasting, uh, uh, walking circumspectly as wise, not as fools. They redeem the time. Mm -hmm. They recognize the days are evil. Mm -hmm. So what they do is uh, uh, keep a, a hold on themselves. Mm -hmm. They watch how they carry themselves because they want to always be pleasing to uh, the God who called them. Mm -hmm. Church folk will put on a good facade and it will look like uh, they're there but when, when opposition comes and what have you they soon fall apart mm -hmm. and, and, and church folk will talk about you and claim they were speaking up for you mm -hmm. but a saint of God will never run you down they're always there for your enrichment and edification you really mean well, putting you in your day. Can you share a word with them to encourage them to stay focused on preaching a sound holiness message and sticking with authority? You know, at these days and time, the Bible is fulfilling itself where uh, those that once were saved and loved God, they're turning their faith as the Bible predicted that it would, and you and I are seeing this. So if you will, can you say something to young females and male preachers that would help them and encourage them. Well, I will tell you, if you stop doing the basics, you will stop serving the master in all sincerity. Fasting and praying are the basics. When you stop doing these things and you stop looking to the Lord as your source and you start looking to other things or people, yeah. your problems develop. Uh, we've got a lot of young uh, pastors, young ministers, who think that uh, uh, big crowds mean success. Mm -hmm. Big names mean success. And it does not. What is successful in the eyes of God is that you are faithful. The Bible says, moreover, it is required in a steward mm -hmm. that he be found faithful. Yeah. If you're faithful to the Word of God, you're faithful to fasting and praying and keeping yourself in the will of God. Mm -hmm. You will do well. John the Baptist uh, 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 never uh, spent a lot of time in the palace. He spent a lot of time out in the wilderness. He didn't eat caviar and all the fineries uh, uh, of the upper echelon, locusts and wild honey. Yet Jesus said there was no greater prophet anywhere mm -hmm. other than John the Baptist. So stay focused by staying with the Word of God, with the will of God. Quit trying to be popular and, and the big dog in town because big dogs soon fall. But he that doeth the will of my Father, he'll stand for Now listen, getting to the Jones family singers, tell us a little bit about that. We see, as the young people say, Bishop, you are blowing up. The Lord is really blessing you and your group. You're doing some fantastic things. Mm -hmm. Tell us what's going on with the Jones family singers. Well, we initially was the Zion Ash. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, after a little difficult period, uh, we decided to make some changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was praying about it, and the Lord said, what's wrong with your name? And I said, nothing. He said, we'll use it. And uh, so we transitioned from the Zion Air, sensational Zion Air, to the Jones Family Singers. As a result of being faithful over the years, I can't stress that enough. It may look like it's not working. It may take a long time to work, but it will work. You don't go on a regular job and get a paycheck the very next day. Got to put some time in. Got to put some effort in. Uh, uh, and at the proper time, you're going to get a paycheck. Yeah. And so it is with the Jones family singers. And as a result of being faithful, not an overnight hot shot, 
but a faithful, well-oiled machine serving God and staying with uh, the principles of holiness. God then put us in position to be seen by people who have money, who have prestige, who have clout. And they did for us what God designed for them to do as a, as a result of our faithfulness. And so now we have, we have quite a few CDs out, but we've got a brand new one out entitled The Spirit Speaks. They took some of the earlier recordings, redid it in a high-end studio uh, with professional people of the highest caliber, and uh, all of a sudden God just puts it on Wall Street. He puts the uh, New York Times, he puts it uh, in Rolling Stone magazine, NPR, wow. black uh, bloggers, uh, international. Uh, the music is playing all over the country. In fact, if, uh, if, if my memory serves me correct, we're in over 400 stations and steady growing. And just because of being faithful, we didn't spend a dime. Mm -hmm. They spent all, almost $100,000 on the CD, the LP, and the DVD will drop in just two months. Wow. That uh, Bishop uh, Fred Allen Jones and the Jones family are big in the House of Blues, mm -hmm. and uh, we know that that's a secular uh, medium, but God has given you guys favor. God has opened the doors through yes. uh, those particular uh, uh, clubs. Uh, tell us just a little bit, Bishop, about what's going on in those clubs. What do you see? How the hurting and the loss and the unsaved are being blessed through your ministry in that cycle? I'm glad you asked that because we do play in some nightclubs. Yes, nightclubs. But now Jesus' mandate say, go ye therefore into all the world. Uh, it was the church who hindered us in, in some respect from obeying that great commission. Mm -hmm. Because they say, you're not supposed to do that. But if the wine bibber, if the whoremonger, if the four day creeper won't come to church, then we take church to them. Yeah. As a result, we played in one nightclub and uh, the man asked me, would y'all come and play? And I looked at him, I said, you do know what we sing. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, gospel music. I said, well, if you open the door after prayer, the Lord said, okay, we're coming. And we did. Little did I know that the sound man was a Pentecostal preacher mm -hmm. who had backslidden. Mm -hmm. And he was from the Assemblies of God. And we got to singing and praising God, all of a sudden, Bishop, we heard, bam, bam, look back, he done fell out under the anointing, wow. speaking in tongue. Hmm. And when he finally come to himself, he told the club owner, I can no longer do this for you. Wow. I got to go back home. I hear God calling me. Hmm. And the club owner looked at me and said, you just cost me a sound man. I said, well, if you invite me next week, I'm going to cost you a bartender next week. Wow. Yeah. Amen. Well, Bishop, uh, we certainly thank you for stopping by. We thank God for, for the word that you preached on this morning. Amen. We're looking forward uh, to the word on this afternoon. But we appreciate what you're doing in the kingdom of God, seeing that souls are one, the hurting, the broken, and the sick, and the bound are being set free yes. by the anointing that God has invested in Bishop Fred Allen Jones and the uh, Jones family singers. We so appreciate you and all that you do for God's kingdom. God bless you real good. Thank you. Uh, is what we're praying. We thank you for uh, having a moment with Bishop Roussel. Thank you. Father, we thank you and we worship you. We bless you. We give you glory. We pray now for those, God, that are hurting. Yes, Lord. Those, God, misunderstood, that are confused. We pray your anointing will destroy every yoke of bondage and remove every burden. Yes. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Thank you so much for a word with Bishop Roussel. Until next time, the Lord bless you real good. Health and wealth belongs to you in Jesus' name.